I thought, I thought I'd treat you to nature. So we're here in nature today. The beauty, you can hear the birds. The sun is shining on and off. Absolutely gorgeous day. No sign of anything that we don't want. <laughs> and yeah, today for me is a little bit of a sad day. Quite a sad day. As it's the, um, we'll talk about the darkness first and then we're going to the light because that's how I do the awakening. Um, so today, last, this time last year, we lost Isaac. We lost Isaac Cappy. Or did we? Again, as I say, I take you from the dark into the light. So the darkness is that he threw himself off a bridge and he was run over by a truck and it was more or less this time last year and it was a terrible terrible shock for me and for a lot of wonderful new friends that i have made because isaac the light isaac brought us together as friends we call ourselves the famalam and capis crew and my memories of him are such beautiful memories because it was a time of awakening it was a time of me learning about all this awful stuff that's going on in the world and not really wanting to face it, not really wanting to deal with it. And Isaac used to call us together and 12 a.m. at night your phone would go off and there would be a message to go on Periscope. And he would do the most beautiful meditations, light meditations with us. At 12 a.m you'd get this message from Periscope. Ah, the sun's come out. I'm a bit like Ralph Smart today, giving you this good ass prime, baby. <laughs> I'm not gonna steal that from him. But um, anyway, so at 12 a.m. we'd get this Periscope go off and there he was, Famalam. We'd all join in. There were loads of us. All the hearts would be flowing. And the first thing he would do would he bring the phone to his heart and give us all a big hug. <laughs> and then he'd do this beautiful, relaxing, light meditation. And then we'd go into, sometimes we'd go into discussions or we'd come back the next day and he'd fill us in on what's really going on in Hollywood. Because Isaac was a whistleblower. And check him out on Google, check out what he did. Well, to me, he was a one in a million, a very brave man who was prepared to tell the truth of what's really going on with the paedophilia in Hollywood. And I, in my heart, I believe that he's not actually dead because the whole story of his death doesn't make any sense to me. I've got a very analytical mind and, I, you know, I'm very investigative, as you know. And from what I've seen, it just doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense, like the world at the moment. So I'm keeping an open mind. The official story is he was thrown, he, he's jumped off a bridge when there were 17 people watching him, okay? <laughs> like who would let someone not stop someone? He was a tiny guy. And they could not stop him. 17 people apparently were on there, or seven, whatever. But he couldn't have jumped if you had, you know, he wasn't very big. That didn't make any sense at all. He couldn't have jumped. He might have been pushed. Then he jumped off the bridge. And what these people apparently did. Now, is this what you would do if someone jumped off a bridge? You would throw a piece of cardboard on top of them. When you knew that trucks were coming up and down that road, at that moment it was quiet. Would you not get up, move the body off the road in order to protect the guy, or would you leave him there? You see, none of it makes sense. Who would leave a man under a cardboard box and let him get run over by a truck? Because that's what happened. At some point, a truck came and ran him over. Now, you got to be an idiot to believe that story. I don't believe that story. He definitely didn't jump off that bridge. Now, some people are saying he was MK Ultra'd and 
he was in that space, but he told us time and time again he wasn't suicidal. But if he was MK Ultra, they messed with his brain. But if there were people on the bridge, how could he have jumped? He wasn't that big. He was quite a little guy, quite thin. Now the body, when you look at the body, there was no post-mortem, there was no funeral. They whisked it off and that was the end of it. Nothing. And what we saw looked like a dummy. <laughs> It didn't look like Isaac. The hair was different. He didn't have long hair like that. He didn't have a long ponytail. So you've got to... Guys, it doesn't wash with me. Now, I, deep down inside, either this is another false flag, where maybe he was murdered and he was pushed off that bridge. But how do you explain the body? It looks like a false leg. None of it makes sense, guys. And... It sounded like, oh, there's so much evidence that he's still alive. And between you and me, he was such a wonderful investigator. He had such a good brain and he was bringing all this great information out about Hanks and Epstein Island. That was his main work. He was working on exposing, sorry, there's a car going by, but we should be he was working on exposing Epstein and his last video that he put out, you all know if you've seen it, from that, it looks like those kids, those little girls filling up bottles of water or something and putting them on, a, on an altar. His dead man switch. Now, the only weird thing, the last transmission he did to us, the Famalam, before he went, before we heard of his death, he sat there talking about that he'd done something wrong and that when we find out, we, we would never forgive him. Now, we still haven't found out what that is. And I, I, I just think that he was whisked off by Q and Trump because he was such a clever mind and he had so much information. And it's all coming together. You know, there's loads of evidence that Hanks is not alive anymore. And that would be poetic justice. Because he was involved a lot with what was going on here with Isaac. I, I, I don't get a gut feeling that he's dead. So what I'm saying is, there was a lot of darkness this time last year. A lot of darkness. And this whole program is to show you how you can use the darkness to come into the light. So Isaac's death was such a shock didn't want it, wasn't ready for it. There I am grieving over my father, getting over all the grief that I'm dealing with. And then I find out this, this beautiful man has left us, a mentor and a teacher who brought us all together. And that we created Cappy's crew and you all know who you are. So the light is that that man brought us all together. He created friendships, one or two in particular have come Lynn and Angie, if it wasn't for Cappy, I wouldn't have met you guys. Or got as, I w wouldn't have got as close to you and we wouldn't be as close as we are. And it's such an amazing feeling to have a famalam. To have people that feel like you, that understand everything. When you're in a situation that you're seeking for those kind of people. And that was the beginning for me. Isaac brought us together. Isaac educated us about everything that people are finding out now. Everything. Even Gil Bates. Everything, everything, everything. We would sit there on the periscopes and they'd be streaming. Isaac, can you tell us about this? Isaac, what about the Queen? Isaac, Isaac. And he was doing his work. He was investigating. And sometimes he was asking us to investigate. And so the darkness, there's so much light in that beautiful man and that beautiful connection that we made between us. So do you see, guys, today we're celebrating. We're saying goodbye, yes. And, and this is interesting because I was talking to a friend about death the other day. And I'm Jewish and she's Jewish. And we figured that we were brought up to believe that death 
is a terrible thing. Sorry, there's a truck going over again, so I'll just... Right. Death is a terrible thing. Death is the end of the world. <laughs> Literally. And you're brought up with so much fear and so much trepidation to talk about something which is actually not normal. In a lot of religions and cultures, death is a new beginning, a new awakening. I remember having this conversation with a Filipinian friend. Death is the beginning after my mother died. It's rebirth. And of course in Buddhism we're taught not to attach to anything. Because nothing means anything. Causing miracles today. Everything. All the new philosophies are that death does not exist. The body cannot die because the body does not exist. So Isaac is here. Either spiritually or in our hearts. Even though his body may be gone. But I personally believe he's working with you. So today, as I say, this is lesson... Actually, this is lesson 17, I think. Oh my God. Synchronicity. 17. Q. Where we go one, we go all, guys. And Q exists. Q is definitely there. Do your research. I believe that Isaac is now part of Q. He may be in another dimension because we don't know enough. We know there's aliens in other dimensions that are helping us. Maybe Isaac has moved on. Maybe he was from another dimension. Everything is clothed with confusion and mysticism, the way we're living every day at the moment. I don't think anybody knows the truth. And even when it's given to us directly, there are some things we know in our gut must be true because you feel it and you know it. We know that the world as we knew it is not the world that we want. We know that the things that are happening to innocence, as I've put on the interview, and children is darkness. But the knowledge of finding all of this out, thanks to wonderful warriors like Isaac and Mitchell, who we protect with all the love in the world and all the light in the world. Is what is giving us the light to wake us up and bring us to a new beautiful world of compassion where we work together with loving aliens and learn technology and how to heal ourselves and how to fly. Wouldn't it be great to fly? But the focus of today is on commemorating a light. A light, a beautiful light. I only spoke to, I spoke to him twice. The first time he was going through a lot and we advised him to come to England to go to, he was working all the time, he couldn't switch off. And we wanted him to go to a Buddhist retreat and I spoke to him directly on Skype. And the other time was when he was having an auction. I, I'm gonna find that video, I've got it somewhere. And he waved at everyone and said hi and we saw him, we really saw him. And if he was around now in body, I'd have him on Moving On TV. I'd be interviewing him. I'd be talking to him. Because thank you, Isaac. There's lots of misconceptions and ideas going on about you as well. And maybe we'll never know. But I want to say thank you, Isaac Cappy. I tip my hat to you, Cappy. Thank you for giving me beautiful friends. Thank you for giving me a tribe. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for the courage that you had or have that makes me go out and do what I do. You are a light at the end of the tunnel. You always were. 
Apparently they had a seven hour marathon or it's still going on on YouTube. You will never be forgotten. Amazing programs like Alice Down the Rabbit Hole is continuously doing programs to find out what really happened. But my prayer is that one day there you will be in a Trump rally with Elvis and, <laughs> and JFK Jr. Who knows, eh? Whatever, I pray to God that you're at peace doing what you love the most, doing what I love the most, your music. Isn't it interesting that creative musicians, artists are the ones like me, like you, Isaac. We're not afraid to be ourselves. We're not afraid to do what nobody else will do. We're not afraid to take the masks off and go out there and say the truth creatives, indigos like you and me and Mitch, indigos like all of us, loads of us, David Ike, we're all indigos. We all take on a job and people don't always like us. <laughs> but you, we loved you, we loved you. And we'll always remember the hugs. So just for a few seconds, if you're from Cappy's crew, or you knew Isaac, or you were on the periscopes, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine taking your phones to your heart and doing an Isaac hug. God bless. I'm just going to do... Thank you. I'm going to do a How to Stay Sane in a Crazy World card, which I channeled from How to Stay Sane in a Crazy World, get them from me, day-to-day -day cards to help you stay a bit saner if you're in lockdown. If you want to contact me, you can contact me and get the cards, you can come on Moving On TV. Please, 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 I need another editor, please get in touch with me, there's not much money. But the pro I'm getting lots of programs to edit and I can't do it all on my own. Adobe was breaking down. Talk about going from the dark into the light. Adobe was breaking down continuously yesterday. That was the darkness. The light was that the guys from Adobe took over by remote and sorted it out. Kept sorting it out for me. But there is some light, eh? And today I decided I'm not working. I'm just doing an awakening for you guys because I said I'd do that every day put on yesterday's and do another and today as I say is 17 Q 17 and the synchronicity with it being Isaac's you can't make it up guys as they say <laughs> the synchronicity with the year since you went to wherever you went Isaac anyway let's choose a card you can contact me on moving on tv1 at gmail.com Nature, oh, I told you this is crazy. I told you this is crazy. You know, people, like, um, I tried to get Martin to laugh and say, my God, it's synchronicity. She pulled the nature card and we're out in nature. 17 today, the awakening number 17, and it just happens to be a warrior's memory of someone who I feel is now working with you, eh? Could that be a clue from the universe? As uh, Kellyanne used to call it, a God nod. Today I'm going to connect in some way to nature. I am. I may walk in the park, or if I can't, I will sit in my garden and listen to the birds. I may gaze at a flower and enjoy the color, the beauty or the aroma. Nature is green for a reason. Green is the color of love and the heart chakra. Nature is there for us to enjoy. It's a big wonder of our beautiful world. If you are struggling to breathe physically or feel that you have no space in life, get out into nature. Sit by a tree or water or hug a tree. You'll feel so much better. Do some gardening if you can. I believe that gardening helps you sleep. 
as it connects you to the earth and helps you to let go of the technical disturbances around you. Today, I will spend a little time enjoying nature in whichever way I can. Nature. How to stay sane in a crazy world. Nature. Take some time out in nature, guys. <sighs> Tune in to the Tarot Show. Tarot on the beach is coming soon. <laughs> tarot in nature will be next. I will be putting on cancer, I think, today. Well, maybe not today, tomorrow, once I get my energy back. I will be putting on The Awakening. And we're looking for people to come on Moving On TV to host their own shows, as I say, and editor to make the programs that I'm filming. I love you lots, guys. Take care. Sending a kiss and a hug. We love you, Isaac. Love you, Famalam. Peace, shalom, salam, shanti. Stay well, stay happy. More than anything, stay wide awake.